Howdy, y'all. You guessed it. We're pulling the sprockets off of this D4 carcass and the pillow blocks, so stay tuned. You can find the process of taking this apart in one of my earlier 4G videos. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this with the magic of editing. We got those pulled off. We're getting ready to put our puller in here. These are egged out from somebody pulling these pillow blocks off here before. So we're going to take a drill and clean these up a little bit so our tool fit in there. And then we're going to pop it off of here. Here's our nut. Very important step. Got her flush with the end of the pivot shaft, so let's put our puller on. And what we're doing over there is, with our puller, those bolts screw into those holes right there, and then we press on this pivot shaft right here and pops this pillow block off. There's an older video in the 4G Little Lefty, the 1939 D4 series, uh, that shows our construction of that tool and even the use on 4G. What do you think? Does it look pretty well centered in there? Yeah, we want, yeah, side to side. That looks pretty good. Does it? Yeah. All right, let me firm it up. Now you're pulling it. Yeah, I way. know. I, I wanted to get these bolts pretty equal. Gotcha. There. There. And this took about our 20 ton press last time to get this off here. Okay, this is a 20 ton port of power on the pillow block. Here we go. I might be out of throw. I don't think so. It shouldn't take that much. You sure we have everything apart? Yes. <clears throat> There's grease coming out now. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. If I'm out of throw. Need another shim in there. You think? You're only a quarter inch. What's in that container that the grease is going in? Anything? Just grease. Oh, okay. More grease. It's got pressure. I think I'm out of throw, Dad. Shouldn't be. Well, back off. You need another one of those half inch plates. Well, it's off. It didn't pop. Look how come it, it pushed out. Oh, I wonder if... It's it's come out a quarter inch. Oh, then it is off. See right there. It just didn't have the dramatic pop like we were used yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. All right. See, it's pushed back a good oh, quarter inch. Oh, yeah, we're inch. up against the nut, so it is off. Okay. This is the tool, and those are the uh, bolts that we've machined down to screw in into the holes on the pillow block. And we're off there, we just gotta get our nut loose and pull it off. Had our nut on here too far and it got in between those pins there that help lock the nut on the pillow block. All right, I think you're home free. Yeah, we're good. This, this popping off of here wasn't as dramatic as we were expecting like the ones on 4G. This one's have definitely been off of here. The ones on 4G, I don't think ever were. Off. Oh, yeah. hey, keep it over the it's leaking oil. Keep it, yeah, keep it on that hand. Somebody's definitely been in here. This is very marred up. You can see that fold over lock has been folded several times. 
So we're going to unscrew that nut and push this bearing off of here. And looks like right there is where it's folded over in the nut. Actually, I found another spanner wrench that works a lot better on here. I don't know where this one came from. It might have been in my grandfather's toolbox, but on here it says UPRR, which I'm guessing might be the Union Pacific Railroad. So, nevertheless, works perfect for a D4. Are we gaining? Yeah. No, it looks Are like you out of threads? It's stripped. Are you out of, th oh, look at that. Well, I don't think that bearing's any good anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have known that, we could have just cut it off with the torch and saved ourselves the trouble. How come? I wonder what that was about. Where we met, see how the back of this has been battered up? Uh-huh. See there, look at that. Oh yeah. And you can see there, there's nicks and marks. Oh, look at the pits in there. Yeah. You know what we might need to do? Just cut that sucker off of there. I think we're past the threads on that big. Yeah, we're we're just here. we're wasting our time. Oh, you can see it pitted. That bearing is shot, shot, shot. Cleaner's having his heyday again. We're done playing nice with this inner race because that nut has run out of threads and it's not pushing anymore. So do your torch thing, cleaner. I'm going to heat a line here and probably Just heat the whole thing. It'll expand. It. Well, once I get a line heated, you'll probably be able to pry it right off because there's only about a quarter inch holding it on here. It's going. There you are. It's done. All right. We didn't even we didn't even have to cut. Nope. Probably should have just cut it off to begin with. But I got my exercise for the day. That's for sure. Yeah, you're gonna get some more now. Oh, great. <sighs> yeah, that nut's in a really good shape. Look at that. We'll be able to use that on 4G if the threads are good. Is it hot? The threads? No, it's all right. Yeah, this is a really good nut. It is. Yeah. I'll, I'll clean these up with the file. Yeah. Cool. Well, you want to move to the other side and get the pillow block bearing off, or do you want to try pulling this sprocket? Let's do the pillow blocks and then sprockets Okay. while we're geared up, and then we can move all that stuff out of the way. We left the nut out a little further on here so we don't get it stuck like we did on the last one. And uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and try and pop this off. This is a 20-ton press on the right side of 7J. Let's give it a shot. Are you sure you want to stand there? No. <laughs> that one popped. Yes, it did. I don't think it took 20 tons, though. No, it didn't pump as hard. That's what I was expecting on the other side. It, it seems to be we found that when these things usually have been taken apart, they don't pop as hard. People don't put them back on with the pressure that we're noticing. And we think 4G had never really been apart because it popped pretty hard, all of it. Cool. Some drama. Yeah. Done. This one's turning. Uh-huh. Oh, gosh. Of course I turned the camera on. You talk too soon. Dad and I were just noticing, when we took these off of 4G, there was these giant washers that go around on the inside of the sprocket, next to where the bellow seal is on the pillow block. And inside of there, there's cork. And we were wondering what sealed that, because on 4G, there was nothing. That cork's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, the cork on 4G was completely obliterated and gone out of there. And you can see where I, cor uh, uh, exception where I touched it, that it was sealed. Yes. Around here, except where I touched it. And then this is a side that ran against the bellow seal, cork seal on the bellows right there. So, Which, 4G, and this, this needed to be done. This don't turn. There's three dowels that lock in these holes here that keep this from turning. 
and your bellow seal turns on here. Yep. That's how it works. Yep. We're going to get ready to pull our sprockets off with our puller that we made. And I've got this old nut here, and this one's not in great shape. But I'm going to put, put that on this bull gear here, uh, on this shaft, so that the sprocket won't fly off. It's going to have a lot of pressure on it. Putting the Franken puller on here, and uh, as you can see, it's yeah, probably got more weld on it than it actually does metal. But the way we designed it is to pull in the middle of the sprocket, and it'll pull on two of these, and skip two, and then pull on a, another one. Well, so. it pulls on, on, this ear will pull on two uh, sprockets, two uh, spokes. spokes. So, and this will pull here, so you, you're pulling on six of the nine spokes instead of just three. And we got our 50 ton port of power. You'll remember that the jack that we used last time didn't make it through two sprockets. Well, it made it through two sprockets, but that was it, it and it gave out the ghost. So we're going to get this hooked up here and give it a shot pulling it off. We just got done making a spacer here to fit behind that port of power and take up the slack in here so we can press off that sprocket. Good? I think so. All right. Is, is it showing anything on your gauge? Yes. Two ton, three, four. Ten. Fifteen. There it went. About eighteen tons. That ain't bad. No. That ain't bad. Nice. Yeah, it's off too. I can see it. Cool. Yeah, it's all loose here. It's up against a nut. Yep, we got her. Okay. Got it. Sit her down. Roll it over there on that tube of six I got right there. There are the bellows. I don't think either one of these bellows were leaking. No. They're certainly not as bad as 4G's were. No. One more sprocket to add to our collection. And this is the one I think we're going to use for 4G. Bets, how, how much pressure are you thinking? I think that has been... I think it's going to be similar. I think it'll be about 15. Yeah, I think maybe a little less than the other one. If the other one was around 18. Yeah. Probably similar. You got the nut on, right? Yep. Three, five, ten, fifteen. Eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, thirty. up yeah is that puck too low yeah it's a little low we're at 30 31 
32 did it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that popped hard. Yeah, that one scared me. Might even see me jump on the camera. But yeah. That one made some noise. That took that took a lot to get that one off. Yeah, that took almost double what the other one did. Oh, easy. Easy. What were you, about 32, 33? Yeah. Yeah, when it popped. I'll have to review the footage, but that's pretty close. That one popped probably that... as much as the 4Gs. Yeah. I don't think we broke anything. Looks good. No. Our puck's in there. This is a good system because you're pulling towards the center. Yes. And you're pulling on six of the nine uh, spokes. It's too bad you're a few few decades too late to teach Cat how to make a puller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, theirs is actually better. But... Well, their newer one is. Their original one, not so much. So. Okay. All right, let's get this off of here. I hate to say it, but I'm getting hooked on the thrill of pulling sprockets. There it is without the sprocket. I think the next step is we're going to hook this thing up some rigging and take it outside with the backhoe and get it covered up so that we can get 4G off the lift and over here where we can work on it. Dad's pulling out the bellows seal. Attempting to. Attempting. It's not going very well. One of the best ways to get these out is with this slide hammer. Just hook it around the heavy part of that bellow seal and yank it right out. And you came out with no damage. We're doing our own Cosmoline job here. Just kind of packing this with grease. Put some on the threads. Put some thread protectors on the end of here. And I'm going to stick a bag over them so we can take this outside. Here we are in the spot where 7J used to sit. And we got some good parts off of it. We got room in here to get 4G over here and continue working on Lefty. So I do want to thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.